What's going on guys, Bryant here. Today is Saturday, February 5th, 2022, and the market is closed. The contents of this video I think is going to be super important, especially for some of you guys that I think are overcomplicating your trading. And some of the things that I'm going to be talking about is things that I'll probably reference in future webinars, but instead of putting or burying this information in a webinar that might be two hours long, I wanted to do a dedicated video on this because I think it's very important. Again, some of you guys are overcomplicating your trading and not looking for the confluence I think you want when you're trying to spot a bigger trade. Most importantly, I want to talk about this date right here on the spy. So this was Wednesday and it was uh, February 2nd, 2022. So just a few days ago, a lot of you guys in chat were bullish and or not necessarily bullish. You were guys were trading calls and things like that. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially if you're an intraday day trader, because yes, we are over two sigma, but you can't ne uh, necessarily neglect this opportunity. If you see some sort of trend like this forming, intraday and then you see prices cracking over VWAP and we crack over two sigma yes maybe you can take this scalp but these are very small moves and again at least for me it's all about training my mind to capture on bigger opportunities I'm not looking to cap capitalize on one or two points if you are a scalper or a micro scalper you're a momentum based trader obviously the momentum is to the upside so you're just trading in that continuing momentum but for anyone else that's looking to put on some sort of healthy swing trades or capture bigger moves let's talk about for a second assuming you're short around high a day here right or anywhere in this vicinity and we'll say 456 the most uh the the most amount that the spy ended up dropping was all the way down here and that's 10 12 so that's 12 points right here so we're talking about capturing 12 points now at the end of every week whenever i do my review i always go back and ask myself what could i have done better or how could i have spotted that the the bigger move we'll say for the week so obviously we know early in the week from last week this was a nice 50 percent retracement this was the buy zone right here for last week so on friday there was a beautiful opportunity to be long and we had this nice squeeze and the momentum was all the way up however for anyone not long from here at the start of this week this was a nice juicy move up what was the next juicy move it was down for the rest of the week right so you want to ask yourself what could you have done better now in the discord right here here was the third so the third would have been this thursday right here and the market actually ended up gapping down we do know that earnings had uh facebook had earnings after the market closed and facebook ended up having a huge miss and that kind of dragged the market down kind of putting you know the first chink in the armor for the nice recovery that we've had in the past few uh past couple weeks but that aside even if there was not a catalyst because it you guys will notice after you've been in the market for a while there's always going to be some sort of bullish catalyst on support and it's probably going to be a bearish catalyst at resistance the catalyst just ends up being perfectly timed it always seems like it's coincidence especially if you trade things like low floats and penny stocks you'll always notice that the breaking pr news happens to come just when a stock is in some sort of apex after it's been consolidating forever that's when the breaking news comes and it actually just ends up adding more fuel to the fire coincidence or not we do know that the penny stocks are heavily manipulated and that happens that way but even for the broader markets if we are in this level right here if we zoom out for a second, I'm going to jump back. Actually, we'll start with here. There were three reasons to take the trade. First first and foremost, we were above two sigma. Now, there's actually multiple reasons. I just want to go over the three that I listed that were very simple. Three reasons. Reason number one, we are over two sigma. You guys already know, statistically, the market does not want to close above two sigma by the end of the week. However, to be fair to bulls, this was a week in which the market was recovering from a massive sell-off. So if we actually just go to the daily time frame, which is usually where I like to start just to provide some context for things. This is the week in which I'm talking about right here in this video. However, this is where the market came from. So whenever we have such a huge sell off like this, the recovery does tend to go a little bit further. If you're new to Quant Trading App or you're watching this video in the future, just make sure you understand that principle. Now, if we go back to the smaller time frame, it was not surprising that the market actually broke over two sigma. However, let's look for confluence for another reason for possibly not being long up here. Again, I'm not talking about the day trade because I do know a couple of you guys are able to pull in a few thousand dollars day trading and scalping to the long side, which is amazing. It's always great to see different traders of different styles making money in any type of climate or any type of market conditions. Just know I will probably probably never buy calls on the spy if we are above two sigma just as i will never buy calls on the 
on the uh, NASDAQ or any of the indexes for that matter if we are above two sigma because I know statistically it's going to want to close below two sigma by close of this week. If the following week, if it's still consolidating around there and then I see a different setup, then yes, I will take that trade long the following week. But for this given week, it's more likely that we're going to have some sort of a pullback. So reason number two, the trading ticks algo had been showing large bearish divergence for a good portion of the week. If we were to actually click this right here, it will pull up. So this was the second. A few of us had been requesting it all week, and it actually kept showing this massive bearish divergence. This is showing where the price of the spy actually was. This is showing the way this algo is reading uh, the options flow. It's saying that the options market is pricing in some sort of a pullback. And if you're requesting, if we put the number five in, it's requesting the past five days worth of information. And this is good for swing trading so it's showing that this bearish divergence would likely imply that the spy is going to pull back i thought it pretty strange that it was it was showing 435 as the level that or below 435 to 430 because this is where it was saying it was likely to pull back to as i mentioned in previous videos i like to see a massive divergence because it doesn't mean it's going to go all the way down to here but even if it lands halfway back this is pretty neat it's enough room here to catch a move from the spy down 10 points so this right here is what i usually target i'm not looking at this because this i think is way too far and we know the options market is ever fluid like everything else in the stock market so things are likely to change so as a tip guys whenever you see this type of divergence cut it in half and say this is more than likely where we're going to pull back to and you can look to get calls for this you can look to structure your your, your put butterflies or your calendar put spreads however you want to structure the trade just get some naked puts or naked calls if it was showing bullish divergence but we had massive divergence here that kept coming and we kept requesting it over and over. Uh, here's another request. Uh, this might have been, I don't know, 30 minutes later or so. Same divergence as we continue to scroll down. Let's see when it was requested again. The SPY, this is now the third. We can still see the divergence was showing even after the SPY appeared to have pulled back a few points. As we kept scrolling, it just kept saying that there was bearish divergence. And I think uh, one of you guys actually asked me, what my opinion was on this so here we go a few uh hours later or a few minutes later or so we can see the spy at this point was at 450 it had already pulled back down but yet it was still showing that there was enough bearish pressure in the options flow at least again the way this algo reads it we were expecting some sort of a pullback whenever i see that type of divergence on top of the fact that we were over two sigma those are two clear reasons third reason if we get back to the gold chat right here the ES was in a major supply zone. The only thing which I posted pre-market to make it very simple, I don't think is necessarily, I don't think it's necessary to type out a 20 page report on what the market is supposed to do for the day when it's as simple as this. Look at where we came from. The market rallied into supply. The same thing, if the market continues selling off straight into a demand zone, it's the likelihood of it bouncing is even higher than if it consolidated over a zone and we saw some sort of downtrend and then demand broke. This, what we're talking about right here is the market went straight up in the span of four days or three to four trading days right into supply this was a heavy supply zone because this consolidation here lasted three days we had a downward pressure of the point of control kept getting lower and lower and at the same time this is the first time the market had pulled back this deeply so there were a lot of people not thinking that the market was going to go any lower trying to defend their position and then we had this massive sell-off this was the first time price had come back to this zone whenever price comes back to a fresh supply zone that scared a lot of people anyone that bought in this area has a chance to break even which means all the volume that came in from here are people under pressure to get out because they were holding these positions for a loss this is their opportunity to get out for a break even now after seeing that, I believe in the public chat, I came in here and I posted this right here. I actually posted it in the gold chat also, but it was just easier for me to find it for this video to just show you guys. I posted this because we were seeing the confirmation right here. This was at 9.50, 9.40, 5 in the morning. So if we come to the chart right here, 9.45 would be... Let's actually, I can actually jump over to the ES because that's what we're currently talking about before we go back to the um, SPY. So here goes, zoom in right here. This is actually taking a little bit of time to load. Okay, so we're talking about, let's zoom in right here. We can see the market was already in the supply zone from pre-market. So here's the ES, which is essentially the SPY. This is the futures on the S&P 500. So right around here, we can see the market was struggling to go higher and higher. So this supply zone, remember, the SPY is over two sigma. We're in this fresh supply zone. If I zoom out and look at it on the greater context of things, here we have it, right? Now, I said a lot of liquidity, 
liquidity, all these people up here are looking to get out of their positions, a lot of supply, a lot of inventory, whatever terminology you want to use. We have a lot of people that were buyers here of last week and they want to get out of their positions. Where's the perfect place for them to get out of their positions? A hot liquidity zone where they know there's not going to be a lot of slippage. So if you see someone trying to sell something for $10 and someone is trying to buy something for $9.50, this is going to say the difference between these two the difference between these two would be referred to as the spread would be 50 cents because that's the difference between 950 and 10. However, if you were to try to, you know, get filled at a wacky price in between there, that wacky price, let's just say you mark it in is essentially what's going to be your slippage. If you're trying to get filled at the price exactly what you want, if the if the, the spread between the bid and the ask is pretty tight, so let's just say the same example, let's just say it ends up being $9.98 is the bid, and then the ask is $10, the spread between these two is now just two cents, right? It's pretty tight, and this two cents spread means there's going to be very easy for people to get in and out of their positions without having to worry about a wide spread. That's what a hot liquidity zone is, and that's where there's a lot of supply or a lot of demand. It means in, in a hot demand zone, people can just keep hitting the, they can just keep hitting the offer or just keep buying whatever price people are selling it for because they don't have to worry about getting, you know, they're already getting a good deal. It's in a demand zone. There's not much of a spread. There's not going to be much slippage. You can just get filled just keep buying 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 now when you're trying to get out of your position you can just keep pressing sell 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 that's what we're seeing right here so we can see this is the bid this is the ass this is the price in which these orders are being trend uh, these transactions were happening on and this is on the es right here this is these are large sizes anything over 100 is is huge but anything over 50 is sometimes going to register as a block order and i posted this just so you guys can see that this price was happening into the bid so that means people were selling it into the bid it was not going into the ass these are these are sellers right here liquidating these positions and we can see every every uh, transaction here was happening into the bid and these were all these big orders coming in right in this hot zone of liquidity so that combination of that even if you're not necessarily reading the tape those are all the indications you in a sense need you don't need to make it more complicated than that the only thing you should be spending your time doing is asking yourself how are you going to structure you know your trade in terms of are you going to buy naked puts are you going to short calls are you going to run some sort of a spread and we'll get into some of the different options you guys have right but i'm, I'm i also want to point this out here for for some of you guys that are futures traders let's just say you just decided to sell just because we are in you decide to short a, an es contract just because for the sole reason we're in a supply zone you're not looking for anything fancy no confirmation anything and you're looking for a three to one trade right here as soon as the market opens we get rejected so this is a uh, 9 9 30 right here this is a 30 minute time frame so right at this point market opens and we get rejected right in this uh, supply zone let's just say you say you're going to set your stop loss above this supply zone that's 34 points but let's make it a little bit wider and say you're going to risk 40 points and you're looking for a three to one so if you're risking 40 points a one-to-one -one would mean you'd want to make at least 40 points. That means right here. So you'd be hitting your target here if you're a one-to-one -one trader. If you're looking for a two-to-one, that means you need 80 points. So right here ends up being an 80-point drop on the ES. If you're looking for a three-to-one, that means you need 120 points. If we come right here, here goes your target. So 120 points. You're risking... So let's actually uh, draw it out in terms of uh, a little bit more of a clearer visual. If this is your entry and this uh, red rectangle here, we'll say is what would be referred to as your, your stop loss zone. So anything above this is 40 points and that's where you're stopping out of. And then we look for your reward. That means anything here, this would essentially be a one-to-one, -one, right? Because this is they, they match pretty equally. And if we were to draw this, we would say that this is a two-to-one. So this is two times what you're risking in terms of what you're getting in your return and then this essentially is three times so this ends up being a great trading plan because again if this is your first time seeing this i'm just re reiterating this as much as i can here's you're risking one to essentially make one two three this is what's called a three to one in terms of risk reward 
ratio. You got it right here. Clean setup and it ended up working out beautifully. Now, I would not have held. I didn't take this trade on the futures. I scalped it short here on, on the day of, but I wasn't interested in holding the futures trade. I took my trade in the uh, options market by using a put calendar spread. And we'll look in that. We'll look, I'll show you guys in a second. A few of you guys actually took that trade with me and I was happy to see some of you guys that are swing trading or some of you guys that are have full-time jobs and are looking for taking these positions. It actually ends up being a lot easier to trade. So let's just jump over back over to the SPY because that's where most of us would actually be executing our orders. I still think less than maybe 10 of you guys in here are actually futures traders. Next reason, right? We have this uh, point of control. So if we just continue right down the list, we already had three, but now I'm just going to add a little bit more. We have a point of control right here, which was a VPOC. This is the first time which the market came back to this VPOC. So let's just say the assumption is extra confluence supply zone. We had three VPOCs. We had three point of controls right here and we had a VPOC. So there's more than likely going to be a lot of sellers here. Next reason without even showing much of it is uh, we know the option the way the options premiums were for this week, it was a little bit biased to the short side. This is for the upcoming week right here. So this is for February 11th. I don't have a picture or I couldn't find a screenshot for this at the time. But what we do know is the market was above max pain. Now, if we look right here, we jump to the intraday a time frame this blue line that's on our chart from the quant trading app a tos script for the intraday study we have max plane plotted on our chart at this time max pain was not at 450 i believe max pain was somewhere around here but max pain is important for the end of the week this is saying that the market is going to want to close somewhere around max pain on close of friday as we can see this is exactly where the market ended up closing pretty much within a point or a point and a half of max pain and also within less than a point of where it's supposed to close which is the weekly sell zone or the weekly resistance level you guys will notice this more times than not if you're new to quant trading app this is where the market is going to want to close on a very strong week because that's statistically what it does it usually wants to close within it if it's pretty strong it's going to want to close close to it on a really strong week it's probably going to close somewhere around here but only a couple times out of the year is it going to going to close above it and maybe one side of the year it might close below it last year we actually did not see it close below it it only closed below it the, for the first time we had witnessed uh two weeks ago right so just understand the statistics behind these levels in itself provides tremendous edge with the market with we, with us having max pain here and the market being above max pain your thought process should be it's probably going to want to re return to max pain towards the end of the week so i just added we had three reasons listed right here but i added a little bit more complexity to it for this video because as you as you guys know in some of the webinars i've talked about looking for at least three confluences to take your trade and we want some sort of quantifiable confluence in other words it could be are we where are we in relation to the quant trading app levels where are we in relation to option premium where are we in relation to max pain what is the trading ticks algo saying and this is based on data it's not based on opinion it's reading the options flow and telling us what it thinks is likely to happen also so it's taking a lot of the decision making that you have to take out of the guesswork because all these other systems are in place to tell you what's statistically likely to happen especially if you're getting multiple confluences on top of that, I was happy to see, I think a one of you, I think it was actually Jay Shuck, if you're watching this, great job on identifying this. Let's actually just switch over to something even like a larger time frame. We'll go to the uh, weekly chart. This was the 50% retracements, and I did get a couple questions on this. Even in the public chat, a few guys had actually caught this right here, but from here, the full retracements of this move so far, so this massive sell-off, this was the 50 to 61% retracement for the move because the market essentially sold off pretty harshly as we see right here and then this was the retracement back up so this was only a 50 to 61 percent retracement and if anything we know about these retracement zones between the 50 and the 61 percent retracement on these larger moves is likely where things will probably try to push back down and then it'll probably look to retest the 50 percent retracement which is probably going to be somewhere around this vicinity before the market may ultimately go higher if it breaks down below the 50 percent retracement we're probably going back to a double bottom or it's going to get stuck uh, at the 61. So if I was to explain that a little bit further, I'll just remove this. I'm talking about if we readjust our fibs and we draw this up right here, we would say that this is going to be a key area for the markets to defend in the upcoming weeks because if we break down below this level, it's not going to be a good sign. Anyone that's been buying that bought the dip last week 
or a week and a half ago, we'll become pretty nervous. And then if we break this, then the market is definitely going to be in full-fledged panic mode because it means that these demand zones are not holding and there should be a lot of demand for the for the SPY at these levels. Now, if we remove these FIBs, just again to reiterate that in case you've never seen a Fibonacci or you don't understand it, this was the sell-off. This was the retracements here. So naturally, it should come back to a level that it should retest which would be this level here before we go higher or we break down from here and go lower so understanding the fibs and i'm just using the weekly time frame to make it easy to understand this is what's referred to as our swing high and this is what's referred to as our swing low it just makes it easier to see these things on a larger time frame so now if we jump back to the daily uh, let's move a little bit back to the smaller time frame. And I want to show you guys how you can structure your trades to actually capitalize on this. I believe it was in the option spreads. I showed you guys this. This was my current risk profile for the SPY. If you don't know how to read this risk profile, this magenta line right here is saying what my current PL is. This is the current PL curve. And then this cyan bluish line right here is showing what my PL is for expiration of however I have my trades structured. So these are the contracts in which I'm in right here on the SPY, but I was showing that I was in, it was in my best interest to have the market pull back. I had already start positioning myself, expecting some sort of a pullback. The way in which I did this is I did not buy a naked put. I think if we scroll right here, we can see we took this uh, calendar uh, right here and I mentioned I I went with uh, these dates as I expressed because I wanted to go with the following week uh, Friday and then with the monthly contracts just to give it some time because at this point we didn't know how long it was going to take before the market was going to pull back so I was already looking at different calendar spreads that had enough time. All this is saying is I'm expecting the SPY to pull back. It didn't have to come back to 440, but it could have come back to 445 and this spread would have still been profitable. So I layered that on top of an iron condor in which I was already in and that's why my risk profile looks the way it was. It was the combination of an iron condor, which means I was pretty neutral on the market after it had did its rally, but I was expecting some sort of a pullback and I wanted to make sure that I maintained a positive theta, but at the same time, I was making sure I was protecting myself for a pullback. Now, if you're not looking to have some sort of a portfolio where you're just managing a bunch of different options positions yes you can just buy a put anywhere up here then the thought process should become how can you give yourself enough time on the trade to play yourself out because what some of you guys also do is you get so fixated if you buy a put right uh we'll say right here because we're at vwap and you're you're so stuck and your, your chart is maybe like this and this is what you're staring at all day and you're not paying attention to the larger picture or the greater context of things this is a great scalp and then a retracement and nice wick rejection right here this is a great trade to take from a day trade scalping long there's nothing wrong with that again for my style this doesn't work because it's too small of a move this is only a point a point and a half or so i don't really necessarily look for these moves not to mention the most of my charts on my monitors are on set to a 15 minute time frame the five minute is probably going to be the slowest nine out of ten times i'm going to look at occasionally i'll look at the three minute time frame because when i was a momentum based trader that's what i use so if i'm looking to trade momentum i'm analyzing the three minute time frame but for the most part i won't even really necessarily Necessarily catch this move because I won't be able to see it on the 15 minute time frame. It's not going to be this clear. So let's just actually switch over to the 15 minute and let's just see what this would have looked like here. So again, even less candlesticks makes it less means less noise on the chart makes it even easier to see certain things. So assuming you just get filled here, let's scroll over now and let's look at diff different and let's look at some uh, different options. I'm going to just slide this over here and let's look at the 440 put. I went with the monthlies, something I always encourage you guys or I recommend if you're looking to uh, trade naked options, give it a little bit of time. At this point, the monthlies don't have much ex time on expiration. I think at the time we would have been entering this trade, it would have been 15, 16 days till expiration or so. But I say, give your trade enough time to play itself out. So if you're looking at the February uh, 18th puts, you can go something with like the 440 strike price, which we see right here. You don't need the spy to go all the way down to 440. If it gets halfway there, that's going to be pretty good. Now, if we zoom in and let's take a look, this would have been Wednesday. So let's just draw this line on the chart right here. And this is where essentially we say this would have been a decent place to get filled. If we're looking for a good entry, and I like to enter my swings after this period here is usually when I'm kind of shopping around for swings. Don't necessarily open up my swings earlier on the day anyway i'd much rather wait later in the day unless there's really an a plus setup for whichever direction i'm looking for i will scale into it which means if i know i'm going to get three contracts in total maybe i'll get one in the morning i'll look to get uh the the second one after lunchtime and then the third one i'll try to get 
uh, during power hour, so like after three o'clock, maybe around three thirty or so, and then I would have scaled into the position. But I never go full size on a swing the first thirty minutes, thir uh, hour of the day, especially if you're trading on a margin account and you're under PDT. It's actually definitely not something you want to do because it means you can't even stop out. You wouldn't want to stop out of the trade because you're subject to the PDT rule, and you don't want to waste a day trade setting up a swing trade. So that's just a rule of thumb. Most of my swings I'm entering here and. At the beginning of the day, I'm more than likely just managing swing trades or I'm not looking to do anything the first 15 minutes of the day. I want to see how the market settles in things. This is different on a Friday or if it's continuation from a move that I would have seen from the day before. Obviously, there's exceptions and every day in the market is a little bit different. But as a general rule of thumb, that's pretty much what I follow. So as we come around right here, we'll, we'll say uh, after right about here. So this would be about 2 p.m. Eastern time. So you're getting filled at two dollars and eighty cents. Now, another thing you guys have heard me say many times, if you're entering a swing, trade positions position your risk to be able to accept a 50 percent loss that's going to be your stop loss so in other words if you're buying a contract for two dollars and fifty cents matter of fact to make the math even easier let's just move this up right here and let's go with uh three dollars right so we'll drag this right up here and make it a nice even three dollars this is something i actually will do on my chart and sometimes I'll, I'll post this picture. So if we see this, you should be able to tell yourself you can actually duplicate this, drag this down right here. This would be 50%. You can change the colors to make this video not too long. I'm not going to adjust the colors. I usually make this green because anything above this means we're green. And then we'll, I'll make this red because I know this is pretty much where I want to stop out of the trade. That is a 50% stop loss, right? We see how much room we're giving the trade to breathe. If you have a defined risk and you know you're only going to lose $150 at your max stop loss, but you have enough conviction to be able to hold the trade seeing this red it's not really going to phase you that much because you're understanding the greater context of what you're doing so if your account size allows you to risk $150 on a trade because that's what this stop loss is by all means you can take this if you have a larger account and you're willing to risk you know, $500 in a trade, then maybe get three or four of these contracts because that's what will allow you to be able to uh, hold before you take your max stop. Now, from a risk reward standpoint, this contract went, and again, I like to give it a wide stop whenever you're, I'm swinging, uh, especially naked options, which is why I don't like swinging naked options because they do require a little bit more room to breathe, right? Because of time decay and all the other nuances that come with naked options. Now, from here to here, that's $300 win. So this is a two to one. So you're risking $150. $150 to make $300. And this is essentially not a very risky trade because you have a not enough at your back and you're giving the trade enough time to play itself out. Your only job then is just managing your risk, trying to figure out how many of these you want to get. Now, if this risk is too wide for you, you can always choose a contract a little bit further out. So let's see, say for example, the 440 is uh too expensive for you for that risk man for your risk parameters maybe go five points lower so we see there was a lot there's a lot of open interest here we see there's a lot of open interest at the 435 so maybe let's see what that one was going for obviously the further out the money you go the lower your delta the less money you'll make but it also generally will mean the less monetary risk in which you're going to put on so let's just say right here so now we're talking about two dollars and fourteen cents and assuming you get filled around two bucks or so now you're risking uh your stop loss is all the way down here so you're risking a hundred dollars so you just maybe this fits your account because you have a two thousand dollar account and you're able to say like i can i can risk a hundred dollars on a trade with this much confluence or this or this much conviction and you end up getting uh this contract went all the way, wow, this contract went all the way to $5. So that's pretty good. So you're risking 100 to make 300 in this particular case. But I would always scale out of a naked option once I'm up 100%, especially if I'm only, if I'm in three, the general rule is I'm always taking profit once I'm up 100% on at least one of those contracts. If we jump back to this one right here, max profit went all the way a little bit higher but again no one's going to nail the exact top you can already set your sell order out at exactly where you would want to get your sell order out as well as you can make it an oco order which means oco just means one cancels the other it means you have your stop loss in place you have your target in place and you're just going to let the trade work itself out you can trade that way i love trading that way especially with the futures but as we keep things moving right along, let's actually go instead of going with the monthlies, let's just say the monthlies are too far out because it's just too expensive. You really wanted something cheaper. This is where you can just go with the following Friday expirations, which would be this right here. I currently have a butterfly on. So that's what you guys are just seeing right here. This is essentially my protection and hedge because my portfolio right now is pretty bullish and I'm pretty heavy in tech. So I just want to give myself some protection 
in case the spy was to pull back this week and it's in this vicinity this would essentially be my max profit which is 440 and i'm essentially risking i think it's like 200 bucks or so on this spread to make potentially up to 800 again it's just a hedge so we can ignore that for now but if we come right here and this expiration let's just say you were to decide to trade the 440 for just this week as opposed to two weeks out let's pull that up on the chart and see how that one ended up working out right here so this is much cheaper of a contract which is pretty sure more of you guys would probably feel more comfortable getting this your stop loss being 50 percent of that is going to be down here to about 80 cents obviously theta is going to affect this contract a little bit more but assuming you're filled here and again this is i'm not using any technical analysis we're not talking about trying to get the perfect entry we're just using the general time frame any time in here to just get the put if you are more of a a seasoned trader and you know when to look for you know wick rejections or some sort of confluence on the tape or something like that you can get yourself a better entry i'm just talking about okay it's past lunchtime and you just decide to mark it in and this is why we're saying this is your entry if you waited till the end of the day obviously this was the amazing field to have but from here now you're risking half of your position so from here uh, down and again this is just rough estimates at this point this is about a 50 percent stop loss and then all the way up here so you're we're risking how much is this about 70 80 cents to make at max profit right here almost three dollars so you're risking 80 cents eighty dollars to make three hundred dollars more realistic expectation probably you're probably out once you're up 200 bucks right here right pretty safe pretty painless trade and again adjust according to your account your portfolio if you have a ten thousand dollar account you can definitely get about three four five of these it's not going to be that painful on your account and you can swing this yes guys as crazy as the market is you can swing trade it's not that ridiculous to when you know what to look for you know the market was not created to have people sitting around staring at the screens all day long there's machines that are trading for people all day long large money and and people that are even large people that manage their own money they're not staring from the charts all day long they're putting their money they're giving them so they're buying themselves some time either they're actually trading the underlying or the stock or they're going further out or more importantly they're trading spreads and that's what i want to show you guys how I like to take advantage of these types of moves. Same setup now, right? Now we're telling ourselves, let's take a look at a put calendar spread. Obviously, this is this is live right now. What we're looking at is currently 1040 Saturday. It's 1040 p.m. on a Saturday, and I'm, I'm still in the office uh, reviewing, analyzing, and I couldn't help but do this video because this is how I document journal. I take these screenshots. I save this for the future because I'm asking myself, what would have been a better spread to run X, Y, Z? So I'm sharing this again with you guys so you don't have to do this much work, but please, the future, capitalize on these types of opportunities because there's easy money to be made here and you don't have to be stressing yourself out studying or observing every single tick what we're looking at here now is this put calendar spread this is just essentially saying if the market was to pull back to 440 i'm not going to explain exactly what this spread is i've done videos on on different uh calendar spreads now let's pull up to see the historical chart this would have been the wednesday right here so february 2nd you could have gotten filled on this spread for about a dollar it's harder to lose money on a spread which is why i like them and they're easy to hold especially a calendar spread because theta which means time is on your side at the lows right here this contract dropped 15 cents for the spread so you're down $15 at its peak if you held this all the way to Friday and we'll look for signs for where you could have gotten out but let's just say you didn't want to swing it into Friday because the jobs report was coming out Friday during pre-market you didn't want to take the risk of there being a very bullish um, report or anything like that getting out right here would put you up a hundred percent on the on your spread being down fifteen dollars to then being up a hundred dollars your risk now was just fifteen dollars you guys see how we've significantly cut the risk down by trading the naked option your risk had to be a little bit wider now your risk is this is pennies you won't even notice being down fifteen dollars that means you can get a thousand dollars in this which means you can you can get ten of these and you would have only been down a hundred and fifty bucks on a spread like this meanwhile you would be up a thousand dollars so in this particular case now that it works out the same way you're risking hundred and fifty dollars to make one thousand dollars why you guys are not excited why or at least why some of you guys are not excited about trading spreads blows my mind i would if, if someone had showed me this when i first started trading naked options and options in general and chasing the momentum like everybody else and just buying naked calls and puts i would have switched over to trading spreads sooner than later people are afraid of having a margin account guess what you only need about two thousand dollars to open up a margin account with thinkorswim with robin hood you can run this type of trade with a five hundred dollar account a three hundred dollar account even i wouldn't suggest you do it on robin hood but that, if that's your only option then 
even doing it on Robinhood is better than not doing it at all. And these these are amazing for swing trading because again, there's not much risk here. Even if the spy was to sell off, you know, another or go higher in this case, if the market went higher another two three points, it would have had to go parabolic before you would have hit your your fifty percent stop loss on this. So before this contract would have hit fifty cents, the spy would have had to gone up probably another five points, which is an which is an amazingly wide stop loss. So risk reward is just better, right? Now let's just say you were thinking 440 is a too far you could have done something like the 445 calendar let's see how that one would have worked out phil would have been around 222 it went to a low of 107 so you hardly would have been down anything and even around here you're up 230 so still up about 100 percent, a little bit under 100 percent, right if you are a little bit more of the safer trade and you want to give it as much time as possible we can structure this same calendar and say like now we're going to do it this way let's go back to the 440 now we're just giving it more days till expiration let's see how this would have worked out so phil would have been somewhere around here so 125 at the low 115 so down 10 cents before closing it around here being up almost two dollars if this one you probably would have held the next day going for two bucks so anywhere around here i think you, at this point you guys get the point there's virtually very little risk and high reward running a spread like this let's go to the 445 just out of curiosity and see how this one was looking so about right here a dollar 40 a little bit more obviously because this spread would have had an even higher probability of working out because it's closer to the money so a dollar 40 low a dollar 35 down six cents that's hilarious and then at the point right here we're talking about a dollar uh, 90 all the way up to two dollars so risk reward also worth it again this is this is essentially limiting most of your risk because you're buying in closer to the money uh put calendar spread which means price was already hovering in your tent i'm not looking to explain it Again, exactly how the mechanics of this works you can just look up how calendar spreads work on your own or watch some of the other videos just know when you're running these types of spreads theta is on your side you're picking a direction which is bearish because you're having a negative delta and calendar spreads benefit from vega which means implied volatility increasing whenever the market sells off implied volatility generally goes up the vix generally goes up which means you're capitalizing on your delta because you chose a negative position you're capitalizing on theta because time is passing by and you're capitalizing on vega because implied volatility is increasing which means you're making money on three of the very important greeks this is amazing guys like understand this this is how professional options traders largely are trading any book in which i've read from the guys that have been trading for two two decades a decade or so have all talked about the guys that trade naked options are the ones that sell options because essentially they say they're selling hope and they are essentially playing that game with everybody they're selling lotto tickets to everybody thinking they're going to win the lottery when yes they might win one out of 10 times but the professionals are essentially selling the options and then you have the other branch of traders that are also trading spreads because they're trying to tilt the probability of success greater in that favor and not having this binary either it goes up or down and they need it to go in their direction to make money now lastly I want to point out here's another way you could capitalize on this this is a put butterfly spread just a different type of spread and this is just for monday so let's just say you were saying the market is going to pull back but you don't you definitely were sure it's going to happen by friday i can't pull up the friday expirations because this is over the weekend and option strat does not save uh the information for us but if we pull this up right here same time frame we would have been filled somewhere around here so this spread is going for uh 90 cents 80 something cents at the low it was going for 73 cents so you're talking about being down 10 cents on friday at one point it was going for three dollars so you're talking about buying something for 80 something cents let's just say you didn't swing it you're getting out at two dollars and fifty cents so essentially almost a $200 win and your risk was if you were holding the position to zero, you can say if you got filled at a dollar, you're risking a hundred bucks to make uh, 200 bucks. But if you're only risking 50 cents, which is half of the position, your risk reward is amazing and you can hold these types of spreads. If we were to close this and let's just say we go a little bit further out, let's go with uh, this upcoming Friday. Let's see how this one would have played itself out here. So now you're getting filled at around, same thing, around a dollar. You're holding this thing down 18 cents, down 20 cents or so, depending on where you get your fill. At the high, you would be up 85 cents, 86 cents, $2 right there. And then let's just say you were not, this is giving you, this is pretty wide. So this is giving you a lot 
of room, obviously, to the downside. You're talking about protecting yourself 10 points down. And if we were to uh, just move this out a little bit, just again, to show you guys how some of these spreads work as you go a little bit further out, again, around 90 cents. But now at this peak, you're not going to be up at that much because butterflies start, their profitability starts increasing drastically as it gets closer to expiration. If we jump back here, and let's just say you're perfect and you know exactly how to nail it, you can really narrow these things out and say, this is exactly where the market would have pulled back to because you're 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 really that good at picking and let's look at what this would be going for 34 cents all the way up to a dollar on friday or 90 cents right here so this is you're talking about getting 200 300 percent returns on spreads and you can really get flexible with these in comparison as we started with the naked options and you guys can see you have to give it a little bit more room with the naked option which i don't like if i'm going to give something 50 percent stop loss or give it a lot of room why not put the same capital in a spread and not be stressed out once i enter in some of these trades i go back to coding working on the algorithm i'm doing one-on-one -on -one webinars with you guys sometimes during the day or I'm answering questions I'm taking care of other things and for some of you guys that might have a full-time job or trying to trade on the side or also looking to become more swing traders understands this is how you can take advantage of the market and then to conclude this also making things simple if we jump back to the discord I think it was um, if we go to Friday uh, one of you guys asked me I think the market was selling off and Okay, I just found it right here. I just had to just uh, cut, jump to, because it's taking me forever to actually scroll through, find it. So right here, so uh, Panda just asked me my thoughts as a few of you guys were discussing. Again, there's so much going on. There's the feds, there's the interest rates, there's the jobs report that came on Friday, all this stuff that was going on. And to me, again, keeping it simple, the only thing that was important to me was the 200 day moving average on the ES was currently at 44.37. So this is pre-market, I believe at the time. So yeah, so 36 minutes before the bell rings let's jump over to the es and what i said while that's loading up right here is the um i'm not really looking to news that much i don't think but i don't think we're just going to slice through the 200 day moving average right what do i mean by that let's go to the uh daily it does not make sense for the markets to sell off from all the way up here and then hit the 200 day moving average with presumably a lot of demands below it, it's very unlikely we're going to sell off this much, 120, 140 points, and then just keep selling. The markets has to take a break somewhere. Sellers have to take a break somewhere. Where are they more than likely going to take a break or cover their positions? Where are bulls more than likely going to come in and buy? The 200 day moving average, guys, that's it. It's the one data point in this particular case from pre-market. I was ready starting to load up my bullish trades. You guys know I went long a firm shop, um, Twitter, I opened up a position uh, long the queues i'm long i my, my portfolio at this point i just started i went shopping on fridays the way i was seeing and i just hedged myself with the spy because understanding where we're at for day trading zero day opportunities there was a lot of them on friday but if we uh if we come to the chart and let's go so what was the what was the exact level again so it was 44.37 so where's this right here uh 44.37 would be right there so again off by a point so this is 44.38 so at this point the market touched this level so when we were discussing it i think it was around uh again right before the market opened uh so 30 something minutes so right about here the market sells off hits it and that's it goes straight up right for a futures trader this right here is how many points from here back up to the supply zone so this was actually the sell zone on qta on um, chart also that's 50 points right there your only data point 200 day moving average and understanding just the dynamics or the mechanics of how the market moves we don't just sell off this much yes it could happen we could have gone lower but it's less likely to keep going lower this move was the move there's going to be some sort of a relief bounce right here and then it comes back it gets retested it puts in a higher high and if we were to look at uh let's go to qta on the spy for a second because again that's more than likely how most of us actually execute our orders so now we're looking at the um this is the 15 let's actually go to the five minute time frame zoom in right here just for context i'll turn on the aftermarket just so we can see and then let me actually just limit this the uh, days right here so it's not so much information. All right, so 
This is what the SPY is looking at. And if the ES is at the 200-day moving average, it's easier to see it on the ES because the it's it's after hours activity. But the 200-day moving average is the same thing pretty much on the SPY. It's just you see it's not as close to it because it happened pre-market. And it's just easier to see that on the ES, right? So this is essentially the SPY hitting 200-day moving average. The only thing you should be thinking at this point is, oh, man, I hope the market opens close to the 200-day moving average because I want to buy here. Now, for your short trade, this is where you can take the the retracements because yes we retrace this is a retracement because this is the move down this is the retracement up this is the next leg down buyers defend this area we go a little bit higher right so this is if you're looking to short this i think a couple of you guys did take it we can see the wick rejections coming in the zone right here this is a retrace short back to vwap you guys know at this point if you're day trading if you're short this is a reversion to the mean you have to take profit at vwap that's just the way it works the same thing if the market came all the way down here and you decided to buy here your profit target has to be vwap or you scale out at vwap if you have multiple contracts now keeping things simple 200 day moving average at this point this would be the 200 day moving average it touches it it's coming up right here so the 200 day moving average is all in this vicinity right max pain on the spy is 450 it's now the day of expiration we know price is generally going to try to fight to get back to max pain it's not always going to happen however on key expirations it's going to be important if we understand the context of last week the market was completely oversold and this was the week where there was a lot of imbalance on the option premium as we can see always here right now this upcoming week it's balanced there's not enough edge we're actually pretty much just at max pain so the market is 70 cents above max pain that doesn't mean anything right now because we're too close to max pain there's not enough edge if the market gaps up to i don't know 500 on monday very unlikely to happen but let's just say max pain is still all the way down here there's no way we can maintain a bullish bias with that thought process because it's gone way too far we need to look for confluence look for signs for price to essentially revert back to the mean and if we're using max pain is the mean look for signs look for rejections look to see make sure we're getting rejected at two sigma you know like keep those principles simple it's very easy and we have these on the charts so down here the only thing we should be thinking about is man is the spy going to get back up to max pain by close today because now we can see that the buyers are defending this level from pre-market and we have the 200 day moving average right down there we see the wicks coming in maybe I'll take a zero day play and buy the 450 call. If we come right here and see what the, what was that going for on Friday in that same time frame right here. Now we're talking about calls going for 30, 32 cents. And this call went all the way up to $2.75, we'll say. So imagine getting this and just saying like, this is my lotto for the day. I'll just buy this, risk the whole position is 30 bucks. Let's see if the market makes it back up to max pain. At this point, this is where it made it back up to max pain. So essentially you're taking this trade and congratulations, you just risk, you know, it was a 30 dollar position you could have said you're risking 20 bucks and right here now you're up 140 bucks and you risk 20 dollars this is a 500 percent return a 450 percent return if you held it all the way like a madman <laughs> all the way up here you're talking about an 800 percent return you're up 250 dollars on a 30 dollar position at this point why not get maybe i don't know three of these make it risk 50 bucks if you had a really good week and then imagine what that does to your uh quote unquote small account you're talking about making five six seven hundred dollars on a $100 position because your only data points were 200 day moving average, buyers were defending this level from pre-market and I think we're gonna get back up to max pain and you're choosing the 450 call and you're buying a zero day. Boom, hold the trade. Scale out at VWAP if you want, take some risk off if you have a couple of them. Why not lock in? Because if you're in two of these and this thing pops, now you're at $44. You close one of those, that means you're holding the last one risk-free. You have no risk on this because you've already collected $30 in premium I mean, because you've already collected $30 in profit and then you hold this just to see what happens and then you end up making an extra $200. Guys, it's not, you know, if, if you if you come in today just thinking about scalping all day long, that's all you're going to get. And obviously, again, there's nothing wrong with that. But why take 50 trades in a day and you have to be right so many times, you have to be in, out, you have to be guessing when you can just come up with a plan and say like, okay, Max Payne's here. Think about your risk reward structure a trade and then let it play itself out because you have this defined risk and you end up getting a monster win like this not to mention again the same thought process last week friday worked we're talking about right here this was a major win this is calls again going i use the 450 call but you can go deeper out the money on something ridiculous and probably get a call for five cents 
you're talking about five dollars maybe get a couple of those and these calls end up going in the money so it naturally it's going to be going for about a dollar that's turning five bucks into a hundred dollars on this happened last week friday again this was our buy zone right here this was a point of control right here this was a 50 percent retracement right here this was a wick rejection right here this was an elevated volume this was going into power hour you guys see this right here so pay attention to these signs and and be able to you know i would love to see you guys i'm glad some of you guys are messaging me saying you've doubled your accounts tripled your accounts you're having some of your best trading weeks ever and you just joined about a, uh, a week or a month ago that's amazing and i'm very happy to see that and for some of you guys that are having a little bit of difficulty or struggling stop thinking about things on such a smaller time frame start thinking about a bigger trade focus more on your risk reward go a little bit further out on your contracts for your naked options as well as learn to use the uh, spreads because this is where you essentially have very small risks and you'll be surprised what you can do to a one thousand dollar account trading spreads not taking on more than a hundred dollars in risk and only swing trading if you take you know 10 trades and you risk 50 bucks each time and you lose on 10 of those trades you blow half your account but it's very hard to get a max your max stop loss of 50 dollar losses on 10 trades in a row with spreads it just it statistically unless you're unless you're literally just buying call spreads when we're <laughs> above two sigma and you're buying put spreads below two sigma statistically that shouldn't even happen to you it shouldn't become to the point where it's almost difficult for you to lose money if you're just following these simple things that i tried to share and just you know you can watch this video back again and there more than likely there won't be a webinar tomorrow so again this video is probably going to be one that i'm going to reference again a, a, a lot in the future because i think it has enough in here to simplify trading and and kind of combine some of these advanced subject matters such as max pains and the two sigma levels but simplifying it and the last thing in which i always say is use something like a 15 minute time frame and look for heavy wicks look for wicks like this look for wicks like this for signs of reversals look for wicks like this look for rejections like this in supply so we see this right here we can see sellers are here there's not the spire isn't the cleanest but we can see this right here maybe we go to something like tesla from last week in which i have another video coming out it should be it's already recorded probably coming out tomorrow or so for everyone even non-quant trading app uh, based members but let's just go this, this right right here major wicks right here nice wicks a couple we have a little bit of a tweezer pattern right here if we keep it rolling see if we see nice heavy wick rejection right here it pushed up to two sigma so start looking just use 15 minute time frames even if you're just looking for these wick rejections off key levels this right here is a nice wick rejection off this weekly level after it's consolidated and then it showed strength going into the close this was a 50 percent retracement right here we're using the same level again these are our quant levels so we can trust them we can know that price is usually Usually going to react around them a lot it doesn't mean it's going to work out a hundred percent of the time it just means statistically more times than not price is going to react on this if it broke out from the level early in the week whenever it retraces to it after it's touched two sigma it has a high probability of bouncing so just know that again guys pay attention to our max pain levels if you have any questions post them in a the discord and i'll follow up on them on upcoming webinars but good job to everyone that's in a sense becoming a lot more of a disciplined trader and i look forward to hearing from you guys and and, and listening to a lot more of you guys improving on your trading and thanks for watching